All right. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> this is a, a message I was going to bring last week, but the Lord turned things around, so it's coming today. Um, again, as with everything that I bring, I encourage you to take it to the Lord and to pray about it and get it confirmed. Um, that would certainly make me a lot more comfortable because some of these things are rather big. Um, I'll start today with this. Um, we've all read the Gospels. And, you know, one thing that's really amazing in the Gospels is um, when you see how Jesus conducted himself, he sure conducted himself. He always knew what to do. He always knew where to go. He always knew what to say. He always had the power to heal when he needed it. Um, he always knew when he was dealing with deceptive people. He always knew what was in their hearts. And he always knew how to respond to them. All right? And, um, you know, he never really had to pull aside to pray every five minutes after every situation he encountered. Give me five minutes, I'm just going to go pray to see how to handle this. He always simply just knew what to do. He knew what to say. Everything was always available for him. Um, and on the flip side, you never see him or hear about him being confused or lost. Uh, he's never uh, lacking in anything. All right. Uh, he was never unsure of himself or what to do. All right. And the reason I point this out... Okay, well, actually, let me, let me clarify this too. Uh, in John 5, 19 to 20, he says, uh, Jesus gave them this answer, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can only see what he sees his Father doing. Okay? So he walked this way because that's what he saw his Father doing. All right? And he never did anything apart from that. So he, he was able to see his father in real time, all the time, as he was living his life, as he was doing what he was meant to do. Um, what's interesting in Matthew 5.8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So if he only did what he saw his father doing, it tells us that he had a pure heart, which really is no surprise, right? No surprise to anyone. But what God has been trying to do in us is he's been encouraging us to purify our own hearts in stepping into deeper holiness and dealing with our issues, bitterness and anger and everything that springs from that, addictions, idols. We have been in the process of purifying our own hearts. And what I want to get to today is this. I believe we've been on this journey and we've learnt about so many things. We've learnt about the heart so many times from so many different angles that I've lost count, I've lost track. And what the Lord has also continually spoken about is trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. Not only trust me, but trust me more, trust me deeper, trust me more, trust me deeper. And, and, and what it comes down to is this. The Lord has highlighted, highlighted our hearts as the most important spiritual component that we have. But he's also highlighted trust. Trust in him, which shows us what we do with our hearts. So our hearts are the most important thing. Trusting him with our hearts is the most important thing we can do. And why? I believe one of the, what he's trying to do, where he's leading us, is walking in the way that Yeshua walked. All right? And by that I mean being connected to Yeshua all the time. All the time. The same way. You see, I believe he modeled it for us in the Gospels. He modeled the walk. See, when, you, when, when, when things start happening in this world and after the glory comes, there is not going to be time to pull aside every five minutes to pray and ask about stuff. You simply have to know what you're doing where you have to go, what you have to say. You have to flow with the Spirit of God seamlessly. Okay? Yes, you sure pulled aside, you know, to pray overnight on like before big occasions like choosing his disciples. But by and large, he went through his entire day permanently connected to his father. 
and permanently connected through the way we've been talking about, through his heart. All right? We've, we've spoken about the mind and the heart so many times. The mind connects to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but the heart connects to the tree of life. All right? I think about two or three weeks ago we spoke about Proverbs 3 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You know, looking at that differently. Connect to the tree of life and don't connect to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't live according to your own understanding. And, and, and the key that I mentioned back then is this, that to connect to the tree of life, you do so by trusting completely and openly. You trust with all your heart. All your heart. Um, so for us, what this represents, what I've come to understand, is that some people would call this a paradigm shift. And another way of putting that is that this is a completely and entirely different way of functioning spiritually. All right? Completely different. And that's not to say that the old ways are bad. By, by, by no means. That, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying this is a new way. A new way and a, and a better way. And this, this new and better way is better suited for us according to what's coming. Okay? The old ways aren't going to cut it anymore. Yeshua modeled that for us and he's leading us into it and he's teaching us what we need to do and what we need to know to be able to walk that way. But there is a beauty about walking this way, right? There is a, there is a, there is a, a, a simplicity about it and a beauty that's absolutely amazing. And that is this, right? When you walk according to understanding, as we have been, as Christendom has been for a very long time, you learn a lot and you learn how to apply it. You learn a lot about spiritual matters and you learn how to pray and how to apply it for you know, for people's benefit, for the, for the benefit of the kingdom of God. But what we are transitioning to now is simple and pure trust through the heart, trusting with all your heart. And the simplicity is this. You don't have to know what you're dealing with. You don't have to know anything. You don't have to study. You don't have to know how to pray. You don't have to understand anything. All you have to do is trust you sure to help you, and he will. He knows what's going on. He has the power. He has the strength. He has the authority. When you trust him with an open heart, you bring him into your situation and he will handle everything on your behalf. And that's the nature of what our partnership with him is going to look like. We are free and clear to focus and function on what we encounter and we let him deal with all the spiritual matters. We let him deal with everything that we encounter. It's so simple, it's beautiful, it's, it's amazing. Alright? So walking this new way is not an academic exercise. It's not a function of the mind. It's purely a function of the heart. And how do you do that? You step into a greater trust. You trust Him. Trust Him more, trust Him more deeply. Alright? So we've talked about trusting Him many times. I'm going to reframe what trust is according to the way I've learnt it and according to the, what he's shown me. Tr to trust him is to connect to him through your heart and with your heart. It's to communicate with him through your heart and with your heart. Okay? To trust him is to commune with him and to fellowship with him through your heart. All right? You open your heart to him. And that is how true intimacy with him functions. Right? That's when you really achieve intimacy with him. You will never achieve intimacy with him through the volume of things that you learn, through the number of conferences you've been to, through the number of certifications you've received or the Bible schools you've been to. Okay, Everything comes through the heart. Mm -hmm. And I know that everyone here to one degree or another trusts the Lord. But let me say this as well. Regardless of how much you trust him, you can always trust him more. All right? Last time we compared trust to, to a pipe or a conduit that connects you through the heart to the kingdom of heaven, to God. All right? It's a pipe, and pipes can come in all sorts of sizes. All right? The size of your pipe, your ability to trust the Lord, is dependent on what you've been through in your life, what you've learnt about God. 
what you know what your experiences have been, what your pains have been. All right, and um, unfortunately, also a lot. It's based on a lot of negative stuff as well. If you've been through hard times in your life, and you've thought that God didn't step in to help you, that can drastically affect your heart. It can drastically affect your capacity to trust the Lord, even though it may not be true. We've talked about the heart many times. One of the things we've said about the heart is that the heart is like a little child. The secular world calls your heart your inner man. All right? Even the secular world knows about your heart. All right? And it's like a little child with its own beliefs and its own opinions. Okay, You might know the truth, but your heart may not. And the reality is, is that your heart exists according to its own reality. The reality of your heart is based on the experiences that it's had. So your Bible, your heart doesn't know much about the gospel or God's truth. It only knows what it's experienced. So if you've experienced a lot of pain in your life, a lot of lack, your heart may simply believe that, yeah, God doesn't help me that much. God's absent. God, all sorts of stuff, right? The, we all have hearts that are jumbled up to some degree or another. Issues that need to be dealt with. And we've been trying to work through some of those things. But that can all be short-circuited and bypassed when you trust the Lord, when you make the conscious decision to trust the Lord. And you know what happens then? When you trust Him and you trust Him deeper, more consciously, more intentionally, your reality starts to change. Your experience of God will start to change. And your heart will notice that. Your heart will take note. And that is how your heart's going to begin to shift and change. It's going to start healing because it's going to start seeing, hang on, God's really not as bad as I thought he was or as absent as I thought he was. Okay? Um, I remember the first time... I've, I've, I've spoken about this before. I'm not going to go over it again. But um, I was in, I was serving in my church. I was serving in ministry. And I went through some mysterious illness once. And I went up to the front of my church for prayer. And they told me, you know, this beautiful guy, Spirit filled, he told me, listen, God can't help you if you don't trust him. Right? That was the first time it dawned on me that I was doing all of this stuff. I was, I was pursuing God really hard. I was studying, I was going to church, I was serving, but I didn't trust him. And you know what the scary thing was? I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. And, 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 and to be honest, to be completely open... I trusted him in my mind, but my heart didn't trust him. Okay? Because my heart blamed him for the mysterious illness that I went through. My heart blamed him for not helping him, for not help for him not helping me. And the, the reason I bring this up is because it touches on another point I've brought up before. That we may think we're on track. We may think, yes, we, we, we're headed in the right direction, but your heart may be in the opposite direction. Right? You may think you trust God, but maybe not. All right? But do you know what exposes all of that? The best way, because it was hidden from me. I didn't know I didn't trust God. It took another believer to point that out to me. The best way to expose what's in your heart in this instance is to trust God. Because most of us don't do that intentionally. We just engage with him in the way we engage with other people. We pray, we pray in tongues, um, you know, we, we study, we, we worship, but we never intentionally engage our hearts. It's, and it's only when you intentionally engage your heart that you're going to find out what's in your heart. Is there anything in your heart that's opposing God? Is there anything in your heart that doesn't want anything to do with God? Hopefully the opposite is true. Maybe your heart's totally in love with God, you know, that would be awesome. But despite the fact that I went to that meeting and that guy told me that I didn't trust God, do you think that made me trust him? <laughs> it, it didn't. Honestly, I'll tell you, it didn't. Um, what I sort of subconsciously did is I made an agreement with my heart and, and, and the agreement was this, I'll leave you alone if you leave me alone. <laughs> right? <laughs> In, upon reflection, that is the honest thing I did. So what I did was, I went the academic way. 
I'll, I'll read lots of books and I'll do lots of service and I'm going to serve in every ministry I can find. I'll get to God that way. I won't worry about my heart. Right? And my heart was happy with that. Yeah, you do your thing. Just leave me alone. Right? And it didn't work. I just got lost in confusion. I was just doing more and more and more. I was buying more and more books. Just it, Things were just getting worse. And I was getting nowhere. I didn't want to get to where I wanted to get. Even when the Lord started talking to me about trust, like the very well, the first few times I started teaching here, you know, trust, trust, trust. There were like four or five teachings. Even back then, he laid it out all on the line for me. And I still couldn't bring myself to trust him. All right? It's a hard thing to do when you've got issues in your heart that stand against him. It is hard. You've got to, and that's one of the things we have to overcome. This is the reason I'm getting into all of this. When you intentionally start to trust him, your heart's going to respond. And you in, are immediately going to see what's in your heart and what's standing there. The first time, like, the first time I tried to trust him, I could feel my heart saying, no, no way. I could feel it. It wasn't saying it in those words, but it was like a horse kicking its hind legs. Like, no. Right? But I started pushing and I started pushing and I started pushing and I started pressing in and pressing in and pressing in. And the more and more I pressed in, the more and more God responded in ways I had never seen him respond before. All right? And now I'm, I'm really getting to a place where things are, are really starting to happen in amazing ways because I'm able to open up my heart to him more. I'm able to trust him more. So what I'm suggesting to you guys is this. In order to walk this new way that we are called to walk, right? Learn to trust the Lord. We've spoken about trust so many times. I don't know how far each of you has gone with that, right? Uh, what is it? Matthew 15.8. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How many of you have tried to bring your heart back to the Lord? More than just your words. Right? Yeah, words are great. Words are good. But where's your heart? When you trust Him, you bring your heart to Him as well. And when you honor Him with your lips and bring your heart to Him as well, my goodness, that's, that's when powerful things are going to happen. Okay? So I don't know, like I said, I don't know where each of you are at. But I want to ask you this. I want, to, I want you to do this for me, please. Each and every one of you. If you're interested in following us on this journey. Because God's calling us here, but we're not automatically going to get there. Just because you're sitting with us, doesn't mean we're all going to arrive there together. Work's involved. Sacrifice is involved. Sometimes pain and discomfort are involved. All right? And it involves confronting the stuff in your heart. But this is what I'm going to ask each of you to do. Every time we encounter an issue... I know we each have our own way of tackling it spiritually. Whether you pray, whether you go straight to the scriptures, whether you go straight to fasting, whether you go straight to tongues, doesn't matter. What I'm asking, this is homework. I'm going to ask about this next week. Pick something in your life that you haven't prayed for, but that needs prayer. Okay? That needs attention, that needs to be brought to God. And what I'm going to ask you to do is this. Don't pray about it. Don't fast about it. Don't, don't do anything about it. Simply bring it to the Lord and trust Him to help you with it. I want you guys to see and taste the power of what trust can do, what the power of an open heart can do. All right? Can you do that for me? Don't bring anything else into it, otherwise you're going to confuse the matter. If you start praying in tongues as well, and the Lord solves the problem, was it trust or was it tongues? Or was it something else? Just trust Him. Trust Him. Alright? Pick something and simply trust Him. And when you do that, watch how your heart responds. Watch what's... Pay attention to what's happening inside of you. Pay attention to the feelings. Pay attention to the reactions of your heart. Pay attention to the inner dialogue, all right? What is your heart saying? You know, because like with me in the early days, when I used to pray, when I had that mysterious illness, I'd pray, but inside of me there was this, hey, he's not going to do anything. You're not going to get any help. 
Right? That was my resistant heart. Right? That was my resistant heart. So in order to trust him deeply and to trust him powerfully, you need a soft heart, you need a clean heart, you need a pure heart, you need a pliable heart, right? That's the best heart to have. That's the heart that surrenders to him. If you've suffered pain and, and there's this stuff you need healing for, it makes it a little bit harder to trust him, but it's not impossible. Not impossible. A little bit harder. Believe me, I'm, I think I'm the hardest case here, given what I've been through. If I can do it, I know you guys can all do it. Trust him. Trust him. And when nothing happens, trust him more. And when nothing happens, trust him more. Trust him until something happens. All right? And I have no doubt he's going to come to the party. He's going to show you. He's going to teach you. This is the, this is the new way that we're going to walk, right? And, 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 and it is this. We're going to be permanently connected to him. When you encounter a situation, someone in need, you're not going to have to sit there and pray for five minutes, Lord, please help this person with this and that and that and that and that. And that. Internally, what you're going to do is commit this situation and this person to the Lord in trust. You're going to trust the Lord to help this person. Simple. That's the, the beauty and the simplicity of all this. Lord, please help this person. That's it. And you do that internally. There's no external signs. There's no external words. There's no external religious stuff. And things are just going to happen. Just like Jesus did. Just like Yeshua did. There was never any big fluff. Things just happened. You know, he's, he said things and things happened. He, you know, he, he laid his, his hands on people's eyes. They were just simply healed. This is how it's going to work. You simply trust him with whatever it is you're facing and things are going to happen. And they're going to happen for you and on your behalf. And they're going to, Yeshua's going to use you to touch that person and to engage with the situation that you're engaged with. It's, it's such a beautiful partnership and it's, it's, it's amazing. That, that's, that's, I believe, how it's intended to be. All right? This is how he wants to work with us. He doesn't want us knowing about every detail. We're not meant to be bogged down or crushed by the number of things we encounter, by the people we encounter, by the magnitude of the problems we encounter. We're meant to simply flow seamlessly with him. right? And like I said... When you trust him deeply and openly with an open heart, it's like a pipe between yourself and heaven, between you and God. Whatever comes at you, you just pass it on to him. You don't hold anything for yourself. You don't try and deal with anything on your own. Otherwise, you're just going to get overburdened and crushed by it. Everything that comes your way, whether it's your need or someone else's, you simply pass it on to him through an open heart and he will deal with it. It leaves you free. It leaves you clear. It leaves you in the best possible place to be. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys to try that out. I really, I really want you to try it out. There's a lot to learn, and there's probably not worth. It's not worth getting into some of the other issues until you encounter them. Otherwise, it's probably going to be a bit premature for that. But let me say this. When you try and trust him, do it intentionally. Intentionally. All right? And when you do it, do it deeply. Um, Proverbs 3, 5. Where is it? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's interesting that when you look up trust in Psalms, it says trust the Lord for this and trust the Lord for that. But Proverbs 5 says, trust in him with all your heart. So it tells me that there's different grades of trust. Yes, you can trust him. You can trust him with part, part of your heart. And that's fine. That's good. That's good too. But really, if you want to walk with him powerfully, trust him with all your heart. And when I say trust him with an issue or anything you're dealing with, that's what I'm saying. Push and push and push until you trust him with all your heart. See if your heart is actually capable of that. All right? And the more you push, I bet you, more things are going to get exposed. More things you've got to deal with. Um, we have to find out. In order to walk this way, we have to find out what's in our hearts. Because once they're exposed, you, you can deal with them. 
and you can overcome them. But they have to first be exposed. And they are exposed when you try and trust him. Not before. You can't really pray. I mean, I'm sure the Lord would help. You can't really say what's in my heart. The best and easiest way is to trust him. And, and whatever's in there is gonna, is gonna pop out. It's gonna pop out at you. Um, if you're not sure how to trust him, ask him. He'll teach you. You're all called to this walk. He'll guide you and he'll teach you like he did me. I'm happy to help any way that I can. We've talked about trust many times, so I'm sure you all have a good idea of what it takes to trust him. Um, but ask him how, you know, and, and ask him to teach you how to walk in a greater trust. Um, and what is interesting too, I'm going to end on this point. Um, it's interesting with Proverbs 3 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Um, I really believe that's referencing the two trees in the Garden of uh, Eden. Um, trust in the Lord with all your heart is a reference to the tree of life and it's access through your heart. It's not access through understanding, which means there's no instruction that can get you there. There is no book that you can read that will get you there. All right? It is access through the heart, which means if you want to find your way to the tree of life, you actually have to find your own way to the tree of life. You have to do it through your heart and by trusting with all your heart. That's how you're going to find your way to the tree of life. No one can tell you how to get there. Okay? You can't use the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to find your way to the tree of life. Okay? That's why I'm asking you guys, do this. Find something and trust. Trust the Lord with it. And that's all you do. This is the first step to finding your way to the tree of life. And it's your first step, if you haven't done so already, it's your first step in discovering what's in your heart, how your heart functions. And it's the first step in discovering how you're going to access the tree of life through your heart. Okay? So... <laughs> Um, I think I've covered everything. There is more to say, but we need to go on this journey. We need to go. Because when the greater glory comes, this is when all this stuff's going to kick in. Okay? Yes? The enemy to trust is fear. That's right. That is an awesome point. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I was getting downloads about that today. Um, that's right. Um and that's something you actually sort of... Uh, yeah, we could talk about that. But you need to see that for yourself. When you trust the Lord, you are going to be challenged. The enemy is not going to like it. He's going to come for you. Okay? And that's something we need to learn as well. How is he going to come to you? What is he going to do to you? Mind you, I don't want to make this look scary. It's not scary. But um, the enemy is going to try and bring you down. And he'll, 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 he'll come at each of us according to our own vulnerabilities and weaknesses. Right? I know he's done it to me many times, but I've learned how to defend myself. Sometimes he gets through, but I'm still learning. But fear is how he breaks that trust. But trust in the Lord is what shields you against that fear. So it's a, it's, it's a really interesting battle. It's a very interesting dynamic. And there's a lot more we can say, but I, I, I need you guys all to join me in this uh, on this journey, and um, it, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be wonderful, and and I, I'll tell you firsthand, it, it is amazing from the scene, the things I've experienced and been through. So um, let me leave you with that. <laughs> All right, thank you, Helena. Thank you, everyone. But please do come with testimonies. I'd love to hear some testimonies next week. Okay, good or bad, good or bad, and also. If you have any questions at all, we've got a questions box here. All right? By all means, free to come to me if you have any questions at all. But if you prefer to ask something anonymously, there's a question box. Just come and fill a piece of paper in, put it in the box, and I'll address them. Okay? Anyway, thank you, Helena.